again and welcome to another of Austin's American Flyer YouTube videos. I've noticed that there's a trend where people get stuff in boxes and they videotape themselves opening it. Um, I'm apparently too old to understand that. Um, but for kicks and giggles, I thought I'd do a variation of that. So we don't have uh, necessarily an unboxing happening here, but how about an unbagging? Um, uh, recently, I had the opportunity to go to a train show, and uh, it's kind of like getting a surprise in the mail. Um, so, I wanted to share that with you all. I thought today, maybe we'd have this grand bag opening, and uh, also take a look here in Doyle and just see what does Doyle have to say about whatever the item is. So, without further ado, let's look at what we have in the bag. Wow, look at this. <laughs> I don't know if you can read this, um, but it says American Flyer Circus. Um, this is a diamond in the rough. I'm not sure if, uh, if there's more paint than there is scratches or more scratches than there are paint. Uh, but that is a tender for the circus engine, and here is the circus engine. Um, and like the tender, uh, <laughs> uh, it's a diamond in the rough. Um, there is a bit more of the engine here. We've got the uh, armature. Um, We've got the field magnet, but we're missing the back end of the engine. Uh, so that's one issue. Obviously no bushings, no springs. Um, I have no idea if, uh, if the uh, solder joints on this wires are, are good anymore. I have my doubts. Um, let's take a look at the frame. Um, uh, where the screws went in, those are, those are nice and broken. And let's see, inside here, at least we have those screws, they're still there. The uh, front truck is there. We're missing um, the, the rear, rear trailing truck and connecting rod. And then uh, the valve gear on this side of the engine is complete. Uh, the valve gear on this side of the engine is not. It's missing the, uh, I think you call that a reciprocating piece. That's broken. And this bar here is nice and bent. Um, so, uh, we have an opportunity here. Now, um, what's interesting is uh, I do not currently own any of um, this style of uh, engine from uh, American Flyer. Most of you are aware that they took this basic design and out of it they came up with the Royal Blue, uh, the Silver Streak, and the Circus Train. Of course, Royal Blue being blue, Silver Streak being silver. Um, and, and the service train being red, although I have seen a little bit of yellow, uh, variations of yellow, and I, I haven't yet determined if, uh, if those are original or if those are somebody deciding they wanted to paint something. Uh, maybe, maybe some of you out there uh, know. I'm sorry, Silver Bullet, not Silver Street. I, I didn't get the names right. Um, but what's interesting about the circus engine, and I didn't compare and contrast that with the Silver Bullet or the Royal Blue, um, it looks like the circus engine had a pretty short run. Um, in fact, according to what Doyle says here, um, it was only made in 1950 and 1951, and there's only two variations of the engine. And the difference in that is right here. As you can see in this shell, uh, these are cast, the, the, the handrail is cast in the side of the shell. The only other variation of this that Doyle talks about is one that has wire put uh, on the side instead of cast in. Uh, and there's only two known variations or two known versions of that to exist. So pretty rare. If you have one of those, hang on to it. Um, and for those of you that know much about the circus train, 
Um, you know that um, the little animals, if there are colors that can bring, uh, bring a lot of value. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm just getting into this and uh, so we'll see. Uh, if, if this becomes a, you know, a full collection or if I just try to repair the engine as is, um, I'll be soliciting uh, thoughts. In fact, I would love to hear from you. Um, when it comes to the value of something, if it's this destroyed, and by this destroyed, I mean take a look at that. That is really, really something. Um, is it okay to paint it? Does that somehow uh, decrease the value of it? And I guess the argument would be is how much value is there when it looks this bad. So um, let's take a look at Doyle again. Um, Doyle says that the scarcity level of this particular engine is a 7. Now if you recall, um, the highest ranking that Doyle gives is a scarcity level of 8. So that means there aren't very many of these out there. Um, and I did do a little bit of research uh, before putting this video together and I did notice that a lot of people have taken the royal blue and painted it into red um, because apparently the royal blue is much more common and so if you are out there looking for a circus train beware for uh, repaints um, again I don't know what they're worth but somehow I imagine somebody taking something and changing it makes it not quite as valuable as leaving it as it used to be. So um, that is uh, the nutshell of what I brought back from this show, except for one more thing I wanted to pull out of here. If you've been following my YouTube page, you remember that I picked up a 975 uh, automated passenger car. This particular passenger car goes with a station that has people that move and they actually can, if you open these doors, they go into the car, they come through the car and they come back out or you can shut the doors and take them on a trip and bring them back, whatever your choices are. Um, and when I got this car, it was missing one of the bolsters, I'm on the trucks, and one of the couplers was gone. Of course, the wheels were gone. And um, aside from that, uh, this car was in pretty rough shape. I'm not sure that uh, uh, it wasn't played with very, very hard or not. I'm not sure what caused so many scratches. Um, but I had it in my mind that I would do these simple repairs. And uh, I spent around $15 for it with bits, parts, and uh, I don't, that's not giving myself any money for my labor. Um, but I wanted to take it to a show and just see, hey, how much would someone give me for this? Um, at the particular show I was at, uh, there were a huge amount of vendors there, but there were only three that I could see um, that dealt with American Flyer. One of those is the person I bought the car from. Um, so I took it to the two others, and one of them offered me $5 for it, and uh, the other person offered me $15. So um, at this point, um, probably going to keep it. Now, um, back to the, uh, the idea of painting, uh, I did notice as I was doing a little research into the circus train that the, there, in the circus train they had one car, um, and it was the same style as this one. I thought, you know, this car is in horrific shape. Uh, I was thinking about painting it, but uh, maybe I paint it yellow. I don't think I will. I paint it the same color, um, but uh, interesting to think about. So, uh, thanks again for tuning in today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, trip down history lane, if you will, and the excitement of opening in a bag and finding out what's in it. Uh, and uh, as always, enjoy your American Flyer trains. If you have any feedback or comments, would love to hear those.